I've made it to the top of this hill. It does kind of make you feel tough. Back again for round two on e-bikes. The folks at Velatric are working with me on a series of videos to talk about mobility and commuting and using bicycles to offset some of our use of you know, internal combustion engine cars. Part one of the series was more of an introduction to e-bikes and, and specifically road bikes looking at the Discover One. For part two, we're doing a little more of a comparison. What bike best fits your needs and what's going on with this big fat chunky tire here? We'll be basing this conversation around this bike here. This is the Velotric Nomad Fat Tire High Step e-bike. Just getting that disclaimer out of the way, I know how a lot of folks can feel about sponsored videos. The sponsorship here for this series of videos is to talk about the practicality of e-bikes, the education, getting people up to speed on these types of products, all of the thoughts about the bicycles themselves, my experiences using them. Those are all my thoughts and there hasn't really been any influence from the manufacturer as to what I have to say there, which was critical for me because I feel like this is a product I'm still getting up to speed on, pun intended. I was an avid mountain biker when I was a Boy Scout I still feel like I'm kind of a novice when it comes to road bikes. The easiest part of this whole conversation is literally just the name of the product. It's a fat tire and that's what it is. It's called a fat tire because it has a fat tire. I'm totally gonna want a specific beer at the end of this shoot. In part one of this video, I, I was using the Discover One, the road bike. I made a specific point in that video to talk about what it was like taking a road bike and using it in, in slightly more challenging conditions, not even in rough terrain, just dirt paths. A wider, broader tire is useful for softer ground. And, and fat tires were kind of invented to tackle things like sand and snow. But of course, a bigger tire is gonna change the sort of construction of the frame of the bike. We have to have wider mounts and a wider fork to accommodate the extra thickness. So we really shouldn't be surprised that all things being equal, a fatter tire on a bicycle means that you're gonna end up with a chunkier, heavier frame. Talking about the Velotrek specifically, the Discover One was about a 65 pound bike, totally built. The, uh, the Nomad is gonna step us up to about a 73 pound bike with literally all the bells and whistles. Backtracking just a little bit, getting this bike shipped to my door. Again, I think that is kind of a perk. A unless you've already invested in a good bike mount for a small car, or if you have a decently sized pickup, getting the bike sent directly to you and you building the bike makes a little bit more sense to me than buying local and then trying to figure out how do I get it home without kind of partially disassembling it anyway. For this build, I was able to clear out just a little of our patio space. So I had a slightly more contained space to work than out in our condo's parking lot and I was really happy that the construction of the bike was basically the same. Nothing really changed putting together the fat tire version of an e-bike as opposed to the road version of the e-bike. With that little bit of extra experience building the Discover One first, I was able to cut my construction time basically in half. And from the first video, I did follow some of my suggestions, changing the order of some of the assembly, like put on the kickstand a little bit earlier just so I could kind of prop the bike up better. And it's the same situation here when we're installing the fender. You kind of want to apply that you install the uh, the headlamp at the same time. The instructions kind of have this, install the fender, do the rest of the bike, come back, install the light, and you have to kind of disassemble the fender a little to get the light on there. I think it was just easier to put them all together and, and do that at the beginning when you're getting the, the tire set up on the front fork. For the Discover One video, I was at a park where semis were doing construction just up and down the road. Here, on top of a, a more secluded hill, I've got these two little prop airplanes that are just running laps right over my head. No, there really is, he's, he's turning around right now. Um, all told, putting everything together, it was uh, it was about an hour to, to get this constructed and ready for my first shakedown ride. Like the Discover One, I think the thing that took me the longest, just in terms of like the, the kind of fine tuning, this front brake assembly, when you slide this wheel on, you really wanna take your time to make sure you're seating this disc brake system properly. You definitely don't want it scraping. And it takes just a couple of those little fiddly adjustments with an Allen wrench to kind of get the pads where they're supposed to be. I, you wanna take brakes seriously. Your brakes are not something to kinda of like, well, I guess it's good enough. You wanna make sure they work. Some of the frame differences between this fat tire and the Velotrick road bike, the Nomad does not ship with a quick release for this front tire. Kinda makes sense that you'd want something a little bit beefier, a little more rugged, and you get more of a socket tool to cinch down this front wheel. The other change, and this one kind of bummed me out a little because it's a feature I really like on the Discover One, the Nomad does not have a brake light. Velatrix supplies you with a little clip-on battery-powered flashing light, which is 
which is fine, but I really liked the Discover One's brake light. You'd hit the brakes and a two-stage high beam would light up on your back tire, especially for a bike that's occasionally gonna mix it up with traffic, with automobiles. It's such a handy safety feature, but it definitely speaks to the, to the implied differences uh, between these two bikes, going from a road bike to a fat tire. Bellatrix is kind of making a slightly different statement as to where this bike is more likely gonna be used. A couple other cycling differences, we move up to an eight-speed gearing as opposed to the Discover One seven-speed. And then on that front tire, you'll notice the front suspension's a bit beefier. All those years ago when I was into mountain biking, this kind of hardware wasn't quite as common, especially for cheap student mountain bikes, but we have a lockable front suspension. I'm just gonna keep talking. Apologies if you can hear some airplane noise in some of these clips. Fat tires, the tire is bigger and broader and cushier and absorbs some more shock from the surroundings that you're riding over. Front suspension also helps with that combination. Big, broad tire and a nice squishy fork. But when you take a bike like this on a road, you might not want all that cushiness. You know, that all of that extra cushion can sometimes sap some of the power that you're trying to put down on the road. So you reach down and you flick this switch and you don't even have to get off the bike to make an adjustment like that, which is handy as you move over different types of terrain. Avid cyclists know this way better than I'm actually explaining right now. You don't want all the extra squishy when you're on a nice level, flat, even surface. You definitely don't want a rigid ride when you're going over rocks and dirt. Honestly, for how rough the roads are in some parts of the older sections of my neighborhood, I just left it cushy. I just left it wide open and I, and I turned to the motor for a little extra oomph whenever I felt I needed it because the motor is pretty sweet. Back to needling pose. The Nomad is still a class two bicycle. That means it's a top speed of 20 miles per hour. The motor can kick on to assist your pedaling or you can run full throttle, a little thumb switch, and it goes all on its own up to that 20 mile an hour top speed. I think for road bicycling and trail bicycling, not just e-bikes, all bicycles, it's really important that you check your local laws and regulations to see where those bikes are allowed. And a class two bicycle should be allowed anywhere a non-electric bicycle would be allowed to ride. But we're adding a little extra weight to the frame and to the tires, and Velotric has done something really smart. They've beefed up the motor to compensate for that. That weight. Their road bike had a 500 watt motor. The Nomad is sporting a 750 watt motor. It's a little more capable. It's a little more powerful. It doesn't change the top speed, but it changes some of the dynamics, the handling, and the acceleration. It's really nice. It's really nice. I, I mentioned in, in part one, the Discover One, that road bike, that 500 watt motor, it struggles getting me up some of the steepest hills uh, in, in our community. It got me up those hills, but it couldn't maintain its top speed. And I've used some lighter weight, less powerful scooters and little folding uh, commuter e-bikes that definitely can't make it up those hills without some kind of kick or pedal assistance. Like you really gotta put your own muscles into helping the motor get you up those hills. And that's really not much of an issue here on the Nomad. It's so hard to set up a video shoot so that you can actually see how steep the hill really is. All of Velotrix bikes use the same battery pack. They're interchangeable. Like I can pop the Nomad battery and put it on my Discover One battery, but because of the additional weight and the more powerful motor, it does cut back on some of our range. Discover One, uh, that was rated for about a 58 to 60 mile range all on throttle, which is really good. But increasing the weight, the range on the Nomad cuts down to 53 miles. That's still really good. And for a lot of the riding that I'm doing around here, I'm not going full motor. I mean, there's a lot of pedal assistance, so you can extend that range quite a bit by turning the, uh, the, the throttle assist down. I should say the pedal assist. You can turn down the motor. And there are a bunch of times where I'm kind of just operating this bike on my own human mobility. So the whole charging thing still feels pretty similar to where we were on the Discover One. I could probably get around two weeks if I were using this as my sole, like, sort of neighbor hood commuter, putting around four to eight miles on it a day, that would be easy. You could probably push that out to two weeks Charging it weekly has been more than sufficient for keeping up with my low to moderate riding needs. So it's good, it's good stuff, it's good specs. It has all the specs. It's got specs and it's got dimensions and it's got geometries. Um, it has all those things, but <laughs> sorry, that was so dumb. Uh, what is it like to really ride a fat tire bike? I was kind of expecting a mountain bike and it's like that, 
but a little more. Mountain bikes aren't necessarily ideal for road biking. Like I said, I felt like I was a pretty confident mountain biker and I still feel like years and years and years of riding a bike, I still feel like a total novice when I've got to mix with traffic. They're, they're different disciplines, even though they, they both operate the same kind of mechanical system. But because of those big knobby chunks on a mountain biking tire, there are times where you you, you might have less traction on asphalt. And then just in general, less of your power is really getting put down on the road. A road tire is built for a, a more efficient delivery of energy to locomotion. And this can be doubly true on an electric fat tire bike. I mean, just getting onto this sometimes feels like you gotta kickstart it. Like I get on and I've gotta really throw my body weight gravity into that first pedal push so that I can have a clean launch. And again, especially if I'm around cars, I don't wanna do anything too wobbly or unpredictable. I have to be in the lowest or maybe second to lowest gear on this Nomad if I'm gonna get it up and running smoothly. So like my first ride on the Discover One, even though I'd had that experience with the road bike, I still felt like the, the weight, the tire feel, the way it grips the road, it changed the balance of the bike enough that I still went and took it out on another series of like practice runs in a parking lot before I felt I was ready to take it for a proper lap around my neighborhood and kind of trek a little bit further out to some of the horse trails that are nearby. The launch is a little more concerning for me than a road bike, but getting up to speed it's such a comfortable ride. It's cushy and it's comfortable. Rough patches of asphalt, I mean, you just don't even feel them. You can roll right over them. We've got some of those patches where it's like asphalt to gravel to concrete. And they're really concerning when you're doing 20 miles an hour on a thinner road bike tire. You know, I, and they're fine. The fat tire, I, you just go right through them. It is, it is so, it's so much more confidence inspiring. Or on sometimes when you're making that transition from like concrete to asphalt and you hit one of those cracks that like yanks your front tire. And here, it's so much broader that you can just kind of bounce right back out of it. I mean, you pop your butt up off the seat and there's so much travel. There's so much sponge off that front wheel. It is so comfy to ride. And then we can take it off of a road and onto a trail and all of the mechanical advantages are just heightened. From having been a mountain biker, I don't know that I would consider a fat tire to be the same quality of cycling experience. This isn't like in a, on a mountain bike where if I've got something challenging up ahead, I had every confidence that I could bounce, I could jump a mountain bike and not like, you know, ram your front tire through stuff. A 73 pound bike, I don't think I can do that. I don't think that's a thing. And especially when that front fork absorbs all of that momentum or all of that downforce that you would need to lift, there's very little I feel like I'm gonna be jumping in a bicycle like this. But again, different from a non-electric mountain bike, there are so many just things in your way that you kind of more confidently just sort of roll over. You don't feel like you've gotta be rabbit hopping down trails as much. You can kind of just like, kind of tank tread your way down a hill. But going off road, the motor becomes something of a double-edged sword. When there is an issue ahead of you, or if you've got like a sudden steep grade, it is so nice having instant torque available. The Discover One was a quick bike. It only took like a pedal rotation to get you up to speed. The Nomad is even faster, but that means sometimes I feel I'm getting more power to the wheel than I might really need in that situation. The pedal assist kicks in and you can feel that tire kind of spin out a bit as it's way more more torque than I really need to get through that kind of condition. I'm still so inexperienced with e-bikes that I, I haven't found my comfort zones yet. I need to kind of push the boundaries of what I feel I'm capable of doing. Considering a fat tire bike as a daily commuter vehicle is a really interesting idea. It doesn't quite feel built for that role, but it's so comfortable to ride. But I'm also not super comfortable yet jumping on this bike from a dead stop at a traffic light. And I'm certainly not comfortable uh, jumping onto this with the motor assist activated. Like it, You would think in your brain, like I just wanna get up to speed a little bit faster, but that initial kick, even at level one, I mean, it gets you up to eight miles an hour shockingly fast. Repeating myself again here, I don't wanna do anything around cars that makes it look like I'm wobbling or losing control. But considering how pretty this neighborhood is and all of the horse trails and all of the hill climbs, there's such a good argument to be had for using this as 
a part-time commuter, really my use is trying to reduce car use. All of the additional, the short treks to grocery stores and to the post office. So I can kind of kill two birds with one stone. I can use this for all those little grocery store treks and I can have a little fun on the weekend if I want to go take it out to a, to a horse trail. Just a few other little decision-making things that are kind of impacting this decision in my brain. I don't love this little light assembly. I really wish we could get something like the Nomad with a proper brake light on the back. I mean, you see enough fast, uh, fat tire bikes intermingling with traffic. It's also kind of become the, the status symbol for dudes. Dude bro e-bike bro dudes. I got the fat tire bike because it makes me look kind of tough. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't impressed with the aesthetics of this design. It does make me feel kind of tough. Also, as a commuter, going to a chunkier tire also makes security just a little bit more of a challenge. I can kind of get away with my folding lock on the Discover. The frame is bicycle enough on the rear tire. I can make it through the, the frame of the bike and the rear tire. I'm a little concerned about, you know, the quick release, uh, uh, quick release bolt on that front tire. That same kind of lock is just not really a thing. <laughs> On a fat tire, you have so much more girth to, to, to pass through. So I really need to just go to a proper like chain lock. I mean, something that might even, I might even need to wear cross body, just a big heavy chain and a padlock and, and run that through the frame of the bike and through the front tire. That's probably the only security apparatus that makes consistent sense if you're gonna have to park this bike in any place uh, for longer periods of time. Yeah, and if I'm riding trails more, I definitely need to step up my safety game. I did get a nicer helmet from the Discover One video, but man, even just making it up and down this hill for a couple of these little B-roll shots, I I'm thinking, like if I eat it, all of this is just gonna be just shredded. I, I, I might even need to look at like, I need a dirt bike kind of protection scheme. I've been describing this bike and it is kind of silly because I shoot all of these videos totally solo. I wanted to bring both bikes out to the same location, kind of talk about the pros and cons. I, I can't ride two bicycles. <laughs> like I, setting up that shot on location for two different bikes when you're all by yourself is is a bigger challenge than I was able to tackle. But throughout some of this video, you might be able to hear a little of the conflict in my voice. I went into part two of this video, they sent out the Nomad, and I was 95% confident that the Discover one was going to be, that's the bike for me, it's the more practical solution. I I'm looking at this mostly for little short trek, road commutes, and spending a little time on the Nomad has really eroded my confidence in making that decision. The fat tires have been impressing in ways that I really wasn't expecting. So you put me on the spot for part two of these videos and I really don't know which one I would personally wanna keep. <laughs> I really don't know which one can become my honest daily driver electric bicycle, but I kinda need to decide soon-ish because Right now I've got two full-sized proper grown-up e-bikes in our little condo and we really don't have room. I've kind of turned our dining room into a little bit of a bike garage. My wife isn't super happy about that. And it'll be sort of the topic of a future video, which one I end up going with. Cause there are a lot more of these little aspects of, of uh, commuting and, and e-bike travel that I'd like to tackle, other accessories. How do we gadgetify? an e-bike? How do we just add better cargo carrying capacity to an e-bike? One last little note to wrap up specifically on the Nomad. At the time this video was shot, Velotrick was running some crazy great sales on the Discover One and the Nomad. Pricing that ballpark puts us in line with some of the good deals you can get on good e-bikes at like Costco. If I'm near the price point of the Nomad on sale, I'm looking at a bike with much less range and a much smaller motor. The competition on this kind of mobility is getting really exciting. I think this is a very good time to consider some of those options. I think you can score some really good gear. So I wanna throw a huge shout out, a major thank you to the folks at Velotrick for sponsoring these videos, for sponsoring these conversations and making these bikes accessible just so I could share some of this information with a bit more experience. All of that information on the Velotrick bikes, links below in the description where you can maybe shop one of these puppies online or just look up. Maybe this is the solution for you. Definitely check that out underneath the 
this video. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. So all of the support lately has been absolutely phenomenal. If you're checking out the links in the description, if you're heading to my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.